Looking at the ASUS ROG Scope RX, it's one of the cleanest gaming keyboards I've ever seen. It's wireless and has a TKL layout, which I think is optimal for the majority of gamers out there. Though, for those of you who still do like to have the numpad, I'll be touching on the full-size version of this keyboard as well. Both are using the same switches, but do have some differences worth touching on, most notably the full-size option is wired. Both boards have style black color themes that I think will look great in nearly every setup. On the TKL version, there's an RG logo in the top right that can be configured to have RGB lighting. Right above the arrow keys are indicators for caps lock, scroll lock, FN lock, and Windows lock. Over in the full size version, these indicators are thrown on the top right alongside the ROG logo with the addition of a num lock indicator. There are some games where you may want to have a numpad, or if you're looking for a board to use in your work from home setup, this could be a nice all in one option. The TKL layout gives you every key present on a full size keyboard, minus the numpad, giving you a much more compact design, yet still giving you the arrow keys and entire function row. Up here, you have access to all of your media and volume controls, which I really like to have as I do tend to have Spotify playing whenever I game. There is one additional key up here though that is the stealth key. What it does is minimize all your tabs as well as mute audio completely. This is actually a super cool feature for me if I want to quickly snap a photo of the setup without showing all of my tabs, but it also works for exactly what you think. Build quality here is definitely good, both are made of an aluminum casing that feels solid and has rubber feet on the underside. The TKL version has a more texturized feeling to the top, whereas the full size alloy feels very smooth. In my opinion, I think the texture makes it feel more premium on the TKL. I do really like how thin both of these are, because some gaming keyboards, especially full size ones, can be extremely bulky. Another big difference you'll see between the two is the keycaps. Both are made of double shot PVT, but the TKL ones have a more grippy texture to them. This reminds me a lot of the casing from the Razer Viper and Daft Adder, which is a big plus because I do feel like it gives me more control. Maybe less so on a keyboard, but I still find typing on these to be superior to the full size ones. They're not bad, but have a more smooth texture to them that feels a little more slippery. It's nice to see they are still shine through though, as this is something that's generally reserved for cheaper ABS keycaps. They definitely have a gamery font to them, which I'm not the biggest fan of honestly, but it's not over the top. The left control key is extended, which is actually super clutch for playing FPS games because it makes it so much easier to hit. Underneath these keycaps are RG's RX optical switches, which are available in both red and blue. Looking at the hollow square design, it is different from your traditional switch, and unfortunately isn't going to be compatible with any third-party keycaps if that's something you're into. Though, to be fair, if you're more of an enthusiast who would want to switch out keycaps, you're probably not looking at this board anyway. The switch gives a very consistent feel, and no wobble that makes playing games with them a joy. With the way these switches are designed, when you're looking down at the keyboard, you're going to see the red or blue from the switch very clearly, especially when just using a solid lighting color. On the wired version, the board is actually IP57 water and dust resistant, so while I don't recommend pouring liquids on it, if you'll be using it in a work setting or just have a drink while you game, you don't have to be worried about breaking it. I went with the reds which are a linear switch and provide a smooth and quick click. There's no bump and only a subtle noise to them. The blues on the other hand have a small bump that will produce a loud noise on each click. Though it requires slightly more force to actuate, so it is something you may want to keep in mind when deciding between the two. While I still wouldn't choose these red switches and the board itself over my new Fihalo 65 when it comes to things like typing, since Modern Warfare 2 dropped, I've actually been maining this board, and I've been so happy with it. When you pair the texture keycaps with the smooth switch, it's actually super awesome for competitive gaming. When you're making those quick movements, jumping around corners, proning, all of that, it's super easy with these switches. There is a little ping on the TKL, but most of the time it's not too noticeable. The larger keys like the spacebar or enter will be slightly more readily though. However, on the wired version, the ping is much worse and even clicking lightly on any of the switches makes a very noticeable sound. This is something really annoying to see given the price tag. While both boards are using the same switches, I'll do a sound test that'll show you the difference the different keycaps actually make to the noise. I find both keyboards pretty comfortable to use, but with the slightly elevated design they have, you may want to use a wrist rest. There isn't one included with the full size version, but with the TKL, you do get this magnetic one. I think it's a little small and tend to pull it out further so that I can actually put my wrist on it, but do find the cushion it has to be very comfortable. The TKL has three different connection modes, wired with any USB-C cable, and wireless over Bluetooth or the 2.4 GHz dongle. The full size is only wired, and the biggest issue I have with it is that the cable is undetachable. I really would have liked to see them just have a USB-C port at the back so that you could use 
use your own cable. This also poses an issue if you were to break it, as you'll need to replace the entire keyboard rather than just getting a new cable. It does split into two connections, which allows for USB pass-through at the back that can be super convenient if you want to plug in your mouse or another accessory. On the TKL version, there's a little slot at the back where the USB receiver is stored, along with a slider across from it to toggle the board into wired mode, Bluetooth, or the USB connection. My cable of choice to use is this black high star coiled cable. It's super high quality, not too expensive, and just makes for a really nice look to the board. I've been using a white cold cable for a while, so to have a black one is really nice. While playing with the cable is the most reliable, I tried playing a couple of games over the 2.4GHz dongle and didn't notice any significant difference. For most gamers, you'll be completely fine maining the board wireless, and it's great because it'll make for a cleaner look to your setup. Asus claims you're able to get up to 76 hours of battery life, even with lighting enabled, which is pretty impressive. To configure all the effects, you'll need to install Armory Crate. It's kind of a pain to use as the UI is super confusing, but if you click on the device tab and on the left side select board, you can click over to lighting and set everything how you'd like. There's plenty of different modes you can play around with, but I like to keep it at a solid white color as I think it looks really clean. Like I mentioned, the only bad thing about this is when looking straight down at the keyboard, I can very clearly see the red in the switches, so it does throw off the aesthetic a little bit. To wrap up, both Scope RX keyboards from Asus ROG are great options for gamers, though ultimately I think they fall short in a few areas. The ping on the word version is simply too noticeable to use it as a daily board, and the non-detachable keyboard is a big con for me. The TKL version does improve upon the switches greatly, as the plate it's using produces significantly less ping and makes for a better sound overall. The texture keycaps are very comfortable and feel nice to press on. The form factor of the board is super nice and the design overall is sleek. At $170, it's very pricey, but if you're a fairly competitive gamer and want a keyboard that will be comfortable to use for long sessions and reduce desk clutter, this could be the one. The full size version is $40 cheaper at $130, but I find it hard to recommend because of its sound signature. Aside from that, it's actually a very nice board and feels nice to play on, so this is something that I hope ASUS can improve upon in a future version. For me, the Scope RX TKL will be sticking around with me and be featured in future gaming setups undoubtedly, though for daily use, something like the new Fee Halo 65 still wins me over. If there's anything else you want to know, feel free to drop a comment, but with that, I've been Cole, and I appreciate you all for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one, but until then, take care.